Nearly all Canadians start collecting their Canada Pension Plan benefits at 65 or even earlier. You can do it at age 60, but you get reduced payments, of course. One retirement expert has been sounding the alarm now, urging Canadians to wait until 70 to take out the CPP, uh, saying it's the best thing you can do to protect yourself from inflation and running out of money in retirement. Let's bring in Bonnie Jean MacDonald, Director of Financial Security Research at the National Institute on Aging at Toronto Metropolitan University. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Andrew, for having me. Just very quickly, remind us of the current rules on CPP and Quebec Pension Plan. You can claim it at 60, can't you? Yeah, exactly. So Canadians can take their CPP or QPP anytime between ages 60 or age 70. Uh, and actually, QPP has now changed their rules so that they can take it up to age 72. However, by taking it each month that you delay, uh, you actually re receive a higher pension benefit. And when I ran the math, I found that if people delay their CPP from ages 60 to age 70, they'll actually more than double this lifetime inflation index pension. What about, did you do any kind of ballpark if I wait from age 65 to age 70, will I also benefit? Yeah, exactly. So you basically it goes up 42 percent uh, by waiting from 65 to 70. So it's quite it's quite a big the way it's usually explained is it says, well, you will reduce it by each month prior to 65 and you'll increase it for each month up to age 70. But to give a ballpark figure of what that means, I actually looked at, well, what's the typical CPP value for Canadians and for somebody with a you know relatively average life expectancy? And I ran the actuarial numbers and I found that Canadians are typically giving up about $100,000 in lifetime income by taking it early at age 60 rather than at age 70. So that's quite a bit of money when spread out over their lifetime. And I think what's really interesting about that number is that not only are they going to get less money on average, they're also giving up all that risk protection, the protection about investment returns and inflation and how long that they're going to live. So it's not too often we hear in the investment world that you'll actually get a higher re expected return and a lot less risk by uh, taking the strategy. That's one of the most interesting aspects of your research, I thought. Your strategy, and I'm sure you'll admit it's not going to suit everybody, people in poor health, etc. But um, you say that there's a good case to be made if you have stock market assets in an RSP, spend them and then wait till 70 when you get the risk free money from the government. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, there are people who just can't afford to delay it. Uh, they're low income or they really do have a, a, a particular health condition that they know their life expectancy will be very short. Now, I say that carefully because we have run a lot of surveys and people tend to underestimate how long they're going to live. Mm. Uh, and I think this is actually a much bigger concern going forward because in the past, people not only would have, you know, defined benefit pension plans with their employer, what they also had oftentimes was a lot of children. So I think what we don't realize in today's day and age, we have baby boomers, which is this massive demographic of people. It's the biggest uh, demographic in Canadian history. They're all about to retire. And not only are they facing the longest life expectancy in history, they're also going to have, uh, they're the first, um, basically the first uh, generation to have relatively few children. And when you actually look at who, who takes care of older Canadians today, it's actually most of the time adult children. So basically, baby boomers are moving into retirement with less income, and that less income is going to have to finance a longer period of time with higher expected expenses. So this is really where there's a lot of concern about an upcoming uh, retirement crisis in Canada. There's so much I want to touch uh, oh, uh, on with you. I'm so sorry, our time is so short. You do address psychology, though. There's a natural inclination. Hey, the government has money for me. I'm taking it now. Absolutely. So it's really interesting. So CPP and QPP are really the only programs we have that are pre-financed. So that's money belongs to Canadians. And I don't think they realize that. They kind of think it's the same thing as, say, getting EI or getting old age security where, oh, I'm eligible for something. I should get it right now. Now, that's not the case. This is actually there's, uh, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars that have been set aside to pay for these benefits. And therefore, when people choose to delay them and get those higher expected pension payments, it's really is going to be there and they actually we have a ch the chief actuary of canada which is a whole department which is arm's length from the government who does look at all the risks and she basically says mm -hmm. that it's uh, sustainable for the next 75 years so 
I think the biggest challenge facing people going into retirement is that they're so used to thinking over the next three or four or five years, but retirement is a time that you have to really start thinking 20, 30, 40 mm -hmm. years into the future. And when you do that, your financial strategies are going to change dramatically from what they were while you were saving. 